Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f is a function from the real numbers to the real numbers, such that f of x times f of y is equal to f of x plus y for all real numbers x and y. If f is continuous at x equals 0, then f is continuous everywhere. Now, let's first remind ourselves what it means for f to be continuous at a real number c. It means for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that for all real numbers x, if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now we're trying to prove if f is continuous at 0, then f is continuous everywhere. So let's suppose f is continuous at 0. From here, the whole goal is to prove that f is continuous everywhere. And to prove that f is continuous everywhere, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either f of 0 is equal to 0, or f of 0 is not equal to 0. Let's first consider the case f of 0 is equal to 0. The claim is that in this case, f is a constant function of zeros. So let's consider an arbitrary real number r. And from here, we're going to show that f of r is equal to 0. Now notice, we know that f of r is equal to f of r plus 0. So according to the rule that the function satisfies, f of r plus 0 is equal to f of r times f of 0. But f of 0 is equal to 0, so this is just f of r times 0, which is equal to 0. So this shows f of r is equal to 0. Since r was arbitrary, this means we've shown for all real numbers r, f of r is equal to 0. So f is a constant function of zeros, and any constant function is continuous. So this is essentially the trivial case. So clearly, f is continuous everywhere. Now, let's consider the case where f of 0 is not equal to 0. Now, to prove that f is continuous everywhere, we are going to show for all real numbers c, f is continuous at c. So to prove that, let's consider an arbitrary real number c. From here, we want to show that f is continuous at c. Now, before we demonstrate that, we first claim that f of c is not equal to 0. And to see how that happens, we'll notice we can re-express f of 0 as f of c plus negative c. And then according to the rule that the function satisfies, this is just f of c times f of negative c. So since f of 0 is not equal to 0, there's no way f of c could be equal to 0. Because if f of c was equal to 0, this would be 0 times f of negative c, which is equal to 0. So f of 0 is equal to 0. That contradicts the fact that f of 0 is not equal to 0. So we must have f of c is not equal to 0. Now we want to show that f is continuous at c, which means we're trying to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than 0, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. From here, we want to find a delta greater than 0 such that this is true. Now, we know that f is continuous at 0. So what does that mean? Well, in the definition, if we replace c with 0, well, then it means that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over absolute value of f of c. So we're going to replace this positive real number with epsilon over absolute value of f of c. So then in that case, there must exist a delta greater than 0, such that for all real numbers x, if absolute value of x minus 0 is less than delta, then absolute value of f of x minus f of 0 is less than epsilon over absolute value of f of c.
Now remember, we're trying to prove f is continuous at c, which means we're trying to prove that this statement is true. And at this point, we've given ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, and from here we have been trying to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. The claim is, if we take delta to be the delta we have in our proof, then this statement will be true. So to prove the statement, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number x such that absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. From here, the whole goal is to show absolute value of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon. And notice, we know that this statement is true. So this statement works for every real number. So in particular, it must work for the real number x minus c. So we're going to replace the x here with x minus c. Well then, we know that as value of x minus c minus 0 is less than delta. That's precisely what this inequality is telling us. So we can conclude that as value of f of x minus c minus f of 0 is less than epsilon over absolute value of f of c. Now, we want to show that as value of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon. So to show that, let's write out the left-hand side. And now, we're about to see why choosing delta in this way was nice. Because, first of all, we can re-express x as x minus c plus c. We can re-express c as c plus 0. So we have this. But then applying the rule that our function satisfies, f of x minus c plus c is just f of x minus c times f of c, and f of c plus 0 is just f of c times f of 0. So both these terms contain an f of c. So we can factor out the f of c. So we get this, but then we can split this up into a product of absolute values. So we get this, but we know that absolute value of f of x minus c minus f of 0 is less than epsilon over absolute value of f of c. So this guy must be less than absolute value of f of c times epsilon over absolute value of f of c. The absolute value of f of c is cancel out, so this is just equal to epsilon. And this shows that absolute value of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So we have proven this statement which proves that f is continuous at c. But since c was an arbitrary real number, this means that f is continuous everywhere. Right? This argument could have worked for any real number, c. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.